Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Oh, we're good? Okay. Got the thumbs up. Good morning, everyone. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Did you want to good morning back? Good morning, sir. How are you? <laughs> my, my microphone's giving me a good morning back. Uh, welcome to the Franklin County Board of Commissioners General Session for uh, Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. Um, if, as a reminder, this is a public meeting, so if you are calling in by phone, if you would please remember to mute your line. Um, and this morning we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Crowley. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Or maybe not. I can't remember. All right. I trust you. All right. All right. <laughs> I trust you. Um, we'll begin this, meeting, this morning's meeting with the approval of the minutes for the August 1st and August 15th, 2023 general session. So moved. Second. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. All right. So um, can, let's begin with the engineer. Mr. President, there's a public hearing, I believe. Uh, we have a public hearing for the resolution 774-23. Can the clerk please read the public hearing? Prayer of petition to vacate Rosanna Drive and Dallas Drive, two unimproved roads in the undeveloped Rosanna Trace subdivision, Prairie Township, Franklin County, Ohio, granted. Well, we have someone from the uh, engineer's office on. Nick, Nick is on, Mr. President, but I believe you have to open the public or open it and then close All it. All right. Uh, so I'd like to open the public hearing for this resolution. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the public hearing? All right. Seeing none, I would like to close the public hearing and have the clerk read the resolution into the record. Resolution number 774-23. Prayer of petition to vacate Rosanna Drive and Dallas Drive, two unimproved roads in the undeveloped Rosanna Trace subdivision, Prairie Township, Franklin County, Ohio, granted. Good morning, Commissioners. Nick Sulis, Government Affairs Liaison for Franklin County Engineer Cornell Robertson. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not joining you in person uh, here remotely because we're attending the Ohio Transportation Engineering Conference uh, at the uh, Convention Center. Uh, so, Commissioners, this first resolution and hearing uh, relates to uh, a vacation request that was filed by Prairie Township. Uh, asking for the vacation of Rosanna Drive and Dallas Drive. As the clerk had indicated, uh, these roads were never improved. Um, and in fact, the uh, subdivision, Rosanna Trace, was never developed. Uh, since no objections to the vacation were filed and no uh, testimony opposing it uh, was offered at the hearing, um, the engineer respectfully requests that the commissioners grant Prairie Township's request uh, to vacate these roads. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 774-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 774-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 775-23. Petition filed for the vacation of an unnamed alley located in the Rome Manor subdivision, Prairie Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Uh, commissioners, this next resolution also deals with a requested vacation of an un unnamed alley, uh, again filed by Prairie Township. Uh, this alley is located in a Rome Manor subdivision south of Broad Street, north of Sullivan Avenue. Uh, this is the first step in the proposed vacation process, um, and approval of this resolution would declare the petition valid and allow the engineer's office to move forward with a with other legislative steps um, to, um, to to determine if a vacation is warranted. Pending any questions, I ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 775-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 775-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 776-23. 
establishing, altering, and widening of Brown Road, Township Road number 142 at Dyer Road, Township Road number 260, Jackson Township, Franklin County, Ohio, declared necessary. But commissioners, this next resolution seeks to declare necessary the improvements of Brown Road at Dyer Road. Uh, this project is located in southwest Franklin County in Jackson Township. This is a collaborative pro uh, project with Jackson Township to assist them with roadway improvements at this intersection. Uh, pending any questions, we ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 776-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 776-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 777-23, establishing, altering, and widening of Johnstown Road, County Road number 377 at 17th Avenue, Township Road number 374, and I-670 East off-ramp, Mifflin Township, City of Columbus, Franklin County, Ohio, declared necessary. Uh, commissioners, our final resolution seeks to declare necessary the improvements of Johnstown Road at 17th Avenue and the I-670 eastbound off-ramp. Uh, the project is located in Northeast Franklin County in Mifflin Township and the City of Columbus. Uh, the Franklin County engineer was recently awarded $2 million in highway safety improvement funding from ODOT, um, and we will be using that for the construction of a modern roundabout at this intersection. Pending any questions, we ask for your approval. There are no comments or questions. Move for approval of resolution 77723. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 77723 has been adopted. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Thanks. Thanks Nick. Have a good one. Uh, to the prosecuting attorney. Resolution number 778-23. Resolution authorizing an application to the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas for the employment of Jonathan Bond Esquire and Scott Friedman Esquire to serve as special counsel to the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. Good morning, Commissioners. Janine Hummer on behalf of G. Gary Tyak, Prosecuting Attorney for Franklin County. You have before you a resolution that would uh, appoint or go through the application process to appoint two lawyers that will be serving in the specialized field of probate law um, for Adam H. Adam H. is permitted to hire private counsel to serve their needs. However, in order to do so, they must go through a statutory process of application. This resolution, similar to what we did last year, is the beginning of that process. After this resolution is approved, the prosecuting attorney will submit this to Common Pleas Court, obtain approval. Subsequently, the Adam H. Um, board will approve a contract through their own process to engage these two lawyers. If there's no further questions, I'd ask for approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of Resolution 778-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 778-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 779-23. Resolution authorizing the county administrator to execute the FY 2023-2024 Victims of Crime Act grant from the Ohio Attorney General's Office in the amount of $104,003.47. Commissioners, um, as um, indicated through the briefing process, I'm very pleased to announce when we bring in funds from other places to help support um, a service and goals that the county commissioners hold very um, close to their hearts, and that is protecting our victims of crime. This um, particular resolution authorizes um, the uh, acceptance of funds from the Attorney General's office that will go directly toward assisting our uh, victim assistant advocates to supplying this service to our victims. As you know, the recent adoption of the uh, amendments to Marcy's Law, which is a victim's rights law, has increased the needs for victim assistance. Um, we appreciate the law that was passed by the legislature, but it does require more time and effort by our victim assistance to meet the requirements of that new law. Madam if you Clark. have no further questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, ask for approval. Madam Clerk, can you read the amount again, please? It's $104,003.47. Thank you. All right. If 
there are no additional comments or questions, move for approval of resolutions 779-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 779-23 has been adopted. Okay. And thank you to the sheriff. Resolution number 780-23. Resolution authorizing the purchase of software and acceptance of funding from Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office to support the Ohio Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force in the amount of $92,963.27. Good morning, Commissioners and County Administration. Albert Smith, Assistant Finance Director for the Sheriff's Office. Our first resolution will allow our office to accept funding from Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office to benefit our Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office is the recipient of a two-year state-funded appropriation to support the ICAC Task Force and its statewide network of criminal justice-affiliated agencies. Now, these funds will be utilized to purchase software to support the investigation and prosecution of Internet crimes against children offenses. Pending any questions, I ask for your approval. There are no comments or questions. Move for approval. Resolution 780-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 780-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 781-23. Resolution authorizing a transfer of appropriations and a purchase order for the return of prisoners. Commissioners, our last resolution author authorizes a transfer of appropriations and approval of a purchase order to cover the necessary expenses incurred in the pursuit of transportation of prisoners. Uh, these appropriations cover the expenses for transporting prisoners during May, June, July, and August. Um, the itemized monthly reports have been submitted and approved by the sheriff. Pending any questions, I ask for your approval. Uh, if there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 781-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 781-23 has been adopted. <clears throat> Thank you, commissioners. Thanks, Albert. Franklin County Children's Services. Resolution number 78223. Resolution authorizing a non-general fund supplemental appropriation for paid placements. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Dan Shook, Chief Financial Officer of Franklin County Children's Services. I would like to thank you for your consideration of our request to increase appropriations equal to $5 million of non-general fund dollars in our paid placement line item. Over the past few years, FCCS has worked tirelessly to reduce the number of children in custody as well as the number of paid placement days. Through this work, we've achieved a 7% reduction when comparing 2022 to 2021 numbers. This morning, I went back and looked at 2018 numbers, and it's an actually a 32% decrease, so significant decreases. Although we achieved and continue to achieve uh, a lower number of children in agency custody, as well as reduction in paid placement days, we did not anticipate the significant increase in inflation being encountered across the nation. The increase in inflation has resulted in many of our placement providers requesting higher per diem rates through contract renegotiation to maintain current placement of our children or to accept new placements. In fact, we've experienced an increased per diem payment of 21.15% when comparing our current numbers to 2021. Because of this significant increase in, a, in unanticipated placement costs, we are projecting to overspend this line item by the amount of the supplemental request. As for the reasons listed above, that FCCS request a $5 million supplemental appropriation be approved, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I just have one question. Um, it's an increase. How much is the increase over last year? We're increasing it yep. to $5 last million year. from... Calculate that for you. Are you asking for the increase in days or? No, the increase in the amount. The appropriation. I know you were saying due to inflation, the um, the placement providers are asking for for more as they renegotiate their contracts um, as it relates to per diem. I was just, I'm just curious about what it was last year. Uh, uh, the per diem cost? I, I'm sorry, I'm missing the question. I apologize. The amount of the appropriation. We're appropriating $5 million. The supplemental oh, appropriation oh, is $5 okay. million. Dollars so you're asking the, the budget amount for that line item was $41 million. Okay. Am I, I apologize if I'm not It's okay. I can, I'll 
ask us why. I don't want to hold it up. It's not going to make or break my vote. I was just curious. Okay. Are there any additional questions? Were you going to say something? <laughs> Kenneth Wilson, County Administrator. Uh, you are looking for the percentage increase in the per diem uh, versus last year. Dan, do you have the percentage increase? The per diem in, in uh, 2022 compared to this per diem right now at this point in time at 2023. Thank you for the increase in per diem when you're looking at the average from last year of 2022 to the average of this year currently is a $15 and 38 uh, cent or 15% increase. 15.38% increase. Okay. Thank you. If there are no additional comments or questions, move for approval of resolution at 782.23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 782.23 has been adopted. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Office on Aging. Resolution number 783.23. Resolution authorizing a non-general fund supplemental appropriation for board and care expenditures. Good morning, commissioners and county administration. Shonda Wingo, director <coughs> for the Franklin County Office on Aging. Joining me today is Larise Collins, our chief financial officer. This resolution authorizes a non-general fund supplemental appropriation for our board and care expenditures in the amount of $6 million um, and a half dollars. The Franklin County Office on Aging plays a pivotal role in organizing and delivering a wide range of services and programs aimed at supporting older adults, dependent adults, and their families in, this, in the pursuit of um, independent living. These offerings include the Senior Options Program, providing free home delivered meals, transportation, emergency response systems, and more. Additionally, the Franklin County manages a home repair program that ensures safety and offers caregivers and kinship support services to those caring for older adults and minor children. FCOA is seeking a $6.5 million supplemental appropriation to bolster its board and care expenditures. This request stems from increased demand and unforeseen circumstances with the goal of ensuring FCOA can meet the evolving needs of the community. <coughs> Notably, data from the Ohio Department of Development indicates substantial growth for Franklin County seniors with a near doubling projected from 2010 to 2040. In 2022, FCOA served 11,771 seniors. As of October 10th, 2023, this number has surged to 14,037, which is a 19% increase from the previous year. Additional challenges include the rising cost of essential essentials, particularly groceries, which are predicted to increase again by 5.8% in 2023. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this surge in cost places additional strain on older individuals with limited incomes. The importance of receiving free delivered meals, FCOA cannot um, overstate as it can mean the difference um, between having access to nutritional meals or not. The impact of these prices increase in, in the increases is unmistakable as evidenced by the delivery of over 1.3 million meals to seniors in Franklin County during the first three quarters of 2023. This, is, this has surpassed the, the final number of 1.2 million meals delivered in 2022. This resolution authorizes a non-general fund supplemental appropriation again for our board and care expenditures in the amount of six and a half million to sustain the Franklin County's um, Office on Aging's critical role in providing essential services to support older adults, dependent adults, and their families in Franklin County. This go um, resolution supports goal number nine and number 10 of the Rise Together Blueprint. And pending any questions, we seek your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 783-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 783-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Shonda. Economic Development and Planning. Okay. Resolution number 784-23. Resolution authorizing a subrecipient agreement with Decker Construction Company to partially fund a material handling system project in the amount of $200,000. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Emmanuel Torres, Assistant Director of Economic Development and Planning. 
uh, this resolution seeks your approval to authorize a subrecipient agreement with Decker Construction Company in the amount of $200,000. And this is under the 2022 Market Development Grant Program offered by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, I'll refer to them as Ohio EPA. In January of 2022, the county adopted a resolution that authorized EDP to submit applications, sign documents, and enter project agreements for the 2022 Recycle Ohio programs with the Ohio EPA. One project application was submitted and the county will serve as sponsor and a pass-through of the market development grant funds to provide matching financial assistance to Decker Construction Company for the purchase of a custom vehicle that processes recycled material. The county has confirmed Decker Construction Company has completed the project and complied with all the grant terms. Uh, by this resolution, the Board of Commissioners of Franklin County accepts the Ohio EPA funds and authorizes the transfer of funds to DECA Construction Company. If there are no questions, I respectfully request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of Resolution 784-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 784-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Resolution number 78523, review of petition to annex 0.505 acres, more or less, from Jackson Township to the City of Grove City, case number ANX-36-23. Good morning, Commissioners. Director Jim Schimmer from Economic Development and Planning. Uh, this resolution is to consider an expedited two annexation of 0.505 acres, more or less, from Jackson Township to the City of Grove City. Uh, the petition case number is ANX-36-23. Uh, the owners are Jaden, JD, excuse me, JD N. Rywalt, uh, Pam Burton, uh, Alex Burton. Uh, the site is located at 2304 White Road. Um, that's parcel identification number 160-001763. Uh, the agent is Casey Waugh. Um, the total perimeter of the site is approximately 640 feet, 100% of which is contiguous to the city of Grove City. Uh, this applicant has, in fact, met all of the statutory requirements outlined in 709.021 of the Ohio Revised Code. The applicant has provided a uh, proof of notification timeline and has provided a resolution from the city of Grove City identifying the services that will be provided once the annexation has been approved and a statement regarding possible incompatible land uses and zoning buffer. Resolution number CR36-23 was passed by Grove City, City of Grove City, uh, on September 18th, uh, 2023. Uh, pending any questions, we would request your approval of this annexation. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval. Resolution 785-23. Second. Moved and seconded. Voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 785-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 786-23. Review of petition to annex 114.2 acres, more or less, from Hamilton Township to the village of Lockbourne, case number ANX-38-23. Uh, commissioners, this is an expedited two annexation of 114.2 acres, more or less, from Hamilton Township to the village of Lockbourne. Uh, the petition case number is ANX-38-23. Uh, uh, the owners are the Lockbourne Land Company, LLC, and Lockbourne Outlot, LLC. The sites are 7200 Moorhead Road, uh, parcel identification number 150 uh, 7120 Moorhead Road, parcel identification number 150 Moorhead Road, parcel identification number 150 211 uh, Moorhead Road parcel identification number 150-00214 and South High uh, parcel identification number 150-002716 7256 Moorhead Road parcel identification number 150-00019 
and Moorhead Road, parcel identification number 150-00191. The agent for this particular uh, resolution is David Hodge uh, from Underhill and Hodge. Uh, the additional information associated with this is that the total perimeter of the site is approximately 14,799 feet, approximately 5,700.8, or 38% is contiguous to the village of Lockbourne. Uh, our analysis shows that the applicant has, in fact, met all of the statutory requirements outlined in 709.021 of the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, the applicant has provided a proof of notification and timeline and has provided a resolution from the village of Lockbourne identifying the services that will be provided once the annexation has been approved and a statement regarding the incompatible land uses uh, and zoning buffer. Uh, resolution 18-2023 was passed by the Village of Lockbourne on September 25th of 2023. Uh, commissioners, I also want to point out that this particular uh, annexation uh, is important to the Village of Lockbourne because it will get it, uh, its land area, land mass area, out to um, uh, State Route 23 on the west side. This allows the village to open up some development land there and uh, very pleased after all of the years of working with them that they've gotten to a place where they can do this kind of annexation and grow their village. So with that, I would ask for your approval of the resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 786-23. Second. Moved and seconded, voting Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 786-23 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Uh, job and family services. Resolution number 787-23. Resolution authorizing a data sharing and confidentiality agreement between Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services, the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, and Franklin County Office on Aging. Good morning, commissioners. Vivian Turner. Chief Administrator for Franklin County Job and Family Services. This resolution authorizes the Director and County Administrator to enter into a data sharing and confidentiality agreement on behalf of Franklin County Job and Family Services and Franklin County Office on Aging with ODJFS to provide the agency with specific data from, Ohio, from Ohio's database for adult protective services. Job and Family Services Agencies are designated by the Ohio Revised Code as the entity responsible for oversight of protective services for elderly adults 60 and older who have been abused, neglected, or exploited. However, the ORC permits JFS to designate another agency to administer APS services, and we have designated and annually awarded funding to the Office on Aging to deliver these services. Franklin County Office on Aging conducts approximately 2,000 adult protective service investigations each year. The data access will support over, overall workload management, tracking residents for demographics, linking residents with other services, and help to eliminate or reduce duplicate data entry. This agreement also supports our one-door alignment of services, allowing greater insight and coordination among our agencies to better meet the needs of our residents. The time period for the data sharing agreement is September 20th, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. And the resolution would also authorize the director and county administrator to enter into any necessary modifications or amendments. I would like to invite Director Wingo uh, to the podium if she'd like to make comments on this resolution at this time. Thank you, Chief. Shonda Wingo. For over 20 years, the Franklin County Office on Aging and the Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services have worked collaboratively to meet the needs of the Franklin County older adults. This partnership has allowed JFS to provide funding for Adult Protective Services Program at the Office on Aging and in doing so, increase, increasing safety and independence at, in home for older adults. The data agreement will allow the continuation of this partnership utilizing FCOA's case management system. The Office on Aging is required to enter all case notes and data regarding Adult Protective Services into the ODAT state system. The data agreement will allow a limited amount of information to also be stored into the agency's case management system. 
providing a complete number of the residents being served by the agency and not requiring two separate systems to acquire the information. As an additional benefit, this collaboration has provided a streamlined process for both agencies to refer senior residents to each other. In doing so, it furthers each agency's um, it furthers each agency to en enhance outreach efforts as well as service provision to our communities for older adults and their families. Thank you, Director Winkle. And pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 787-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 787-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 788-23. Resolution approving a COVID-19 recovery grant agreement with Momentum Excellence Incorporated for youth artistic enrichment programming in the amount of $69,999.33. Commissioners, the Momentum program was started in 2003 with the goal of empowering young people through dance, music, and performance. Momentum is just as much about supporting social emotional health as well as physical health and well being. Programming is designed to build self confidence while fostering resilience and teamwork skills, and it provides an outlet for processing complex emotions. Through this COVID 19 recovery grant, Momentum classes will be offered during the school day at 15 elementary schools across the county as well as through partnerships with other youth serving organizations. There's a, priori there, there's a priority on supporting neighborhoods where access to arts education programming can be a challenge for young people. Under this award, Momentum will serve approximately 950 Franklin County residents. The resolution aligns with our Rise Together Blueprint goal number 11. It also reflects your recognition of gun violence prevention as a as gun violence as a public health emergency or crisis, especially among our youth. Momentum demonstrates your commitment to funding youth engagement activities to give our youngest residents alternatives to social isolation and mental stress that can pose risk to their safety and well-being. Joining us today to speak in support of this resolution is Momentum founder and interim executive director Monica Kreigler. I believe she's present and can join us at the podium. Yes, thank you. And thank you to the commissioners for all the work you do throughout every day, every week, every month. Really appreciate all you do. And for what all of you do who sit at this important table, thank you. I really appreciate it. So yes, Momentum works with almost 1,000 fourth grade children every week of the school year. We go in um, to their school gym and uh, give them a 45 minute dance class once a week. And by the end of the school year, all of those 900, call it 1,000, <coughs> school children are ready to perform at the Davidson Theater. And we go to that trouble and to that expense and uh, because we realize that if children work hard every week at something that's a good risk, they can feel successful at the end. And so one year, there were two little boys going down the escalator at the Davidson Theater after their grand year-end performance that they gave with a thousand other children. And one said to the other, you know, on our way up this escalator today, before our performances, we were nobodies. Going down this escalator, we're superstars. <laughs> and that's it in a nutshell. Um, and Momentum, I'm happy to say after 21 years of working hard and then working harder, uh, we're ready to grow. And so your support is enabling us to stay strong and to grow and look down the road to the future and Superintendent Angela Chapman has expressed that she feels that momentum would be a great thing for all of the fourth graders to have during their school year. That's an ambitious goal, but we'll get there. Together we can get there. Um, and we're also looking at increasing our after school programs. And um, we all would agree that that's a time of day when children are most vulnerable. And if we can bring them together through the arts 
and provide them with a community that is safe and has wraparound services and, and can support them in other ways, like maybe getting into college or what other um, programs we might bring into what we're doing to collaborate. Um, that's something we're looking towards. So yes, the arts have a unique power to inspire greatness in the Momentum Kids, and they are our future. So I, I thank you, and I'm grateful. Thank you so much, Monica. And commissioners, pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. Uh, thank you, President O'Grady. Uh, Ms. Kreidler, thank you so much. Uh, Momentum is um, truly uh, a gem of, of Central Ohio. And uh, I've had the experience of the last show, I think it was this past year I went to over at the Davidson yes. Center. Um, the story struck me because the performances are message oriented and um, oftentimes they are messages that are directed at the children who are participating but also the audience that is watching them engage and perform. And I remember very, um, very much this performance from last year because the story was about um, this emperor who was um, giving up the throne, I, I guess, at some point. And what she had done was she'd given seeds to all of the kids in the village to plant this flower. And then she said, bring me the most beautiful flower um, when it, um, when it grow, grows. And, and so then the day came when everyone harvested their flowers and brought them to the emperor and they presented their flowers and they had these, they all got in line and showed this flower. But there was one little kid who, he did everything he could to grow this flower seed. So he did all this the sunlight and, and water and he did it and, it and the flower just never grew. It was, it was, he was just heart struck, it was heart broke. Uh, and so um, the day comes with the empress, she, she wants to see their, their flower. And so they all line up, they all got these big grandiose flowers, they've done all these things. And she gets, and she's like, no, 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 because I guess the person with the greatest flower is going to win uh, and be the next emperor. Uh, well, this gets to the kid who doesn't have flower. He's like, I'm sorry. I did everything I could to make this flower grow. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't grow. It didn't do anything. And, uh, and she chose that child as the, um, am I telling the story right? Exactly. Did my, okay. And so yes. the, so the um, I usually don't have this great of memory. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I'm like questioning my own telling of the story. But I, but I really, this really struck me because so the flower, the, so the kid who didn't have, uh, the, who, whose flower didn't grow in the pot, and he was distraught, devastated, just, you know, and she chose him as emperor, and she said, at the end, she gave him the seed, she gave everybody seeds that wouldn't grow. And he was the only one that told the truth because they all sort of got different seeds and they did all this other things to make their flowers grow. So they, they basically were lying to try to, you know, make their flower. And he was the one person that didn't. And I thought it was the greatest lesson mm -hmm. for a young person in so many ways. But they got to experience in a fun and artistic way in, in all the pride that the kids had while they're on stage performing. And the message that was embedded in the story, it was clear that they understood and got what they were doing. And I absolutely love the performance. It was absolutely just, a, a, and it was in the middle of the day, which is always hard to get to for, for some folks. Um, and I was so grateful that I did. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm going every year now. Because, <laughs> and I, I've been over the years, but not every year. Yeah, and yeah. so, uh, but the point I'm saying is that um, that's where the rubber meets the road mm -hmm. in, in really <coughs> educating our, our kids. Mm -hmm. And the last point I said, because I promise I don't be on a soapbox, but but we get so centered on pedagogy, what's mm -hmm. going on in a classroom, we never stop to think about all the things that go on outside of the classroom that impact <laughs> young people's lives. And sometimes just teaching them messages in a way where they can engage in an artistic and performance way is bigger than any classroom lesson that they'll ever get. And it might, whether it's mathematics or reading, uh, there are so many things that go into that experience. And I just wanna commend you for uh, momentum and what it's done and what it means to these young people. So just, I just wanted to say that because it was just a great experience and, and for me to see it as it was performed was, uh, was really something special. Thank you. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, uh, President O'Grady, and thank you, Ms. Kreidler, for being here. Thank you, Commissioner Boyce, for sharing that story. You really, like, it was a really great segue to what I was going to say just about why it matters to invest in like arts and play um, and, and things like that. Uh, I couldn't even just say my comments any better than you just told that story. And, and that's why, that's why it matters. And I know 
you know, over the years when it comes to like what gets uh, cut from a budget, whether when it's when it comes to school funding or other social programs. Um, but this is why it matters to uh, invest in social and emotional skills because it boosts the confidence of kiddos who felt like they were no one and they're always somebody. Like they're amazing and they matter, right? Um, but they got to see themselves and have a different um, take of their own perspective. Um, and then who knows who was sparked, what, what was sparked in a kid after you know that performance, and I want to go. I want to get an invitation. Oh, um, it's yeah. open to the public. I, I, I want to go. Free and open to the public. But what we'll did, go absolutely, I would love to. I'd love to do all the things. But you know what that um, performance that they had worked on um, told not just you know have fun and play with your your friends, um, but why it matters to tell the truth, right? And um, you always win when you tell the truth, mm -hmm. and, and so. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, and I'm happy to support this resolution. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Yeah, awesome. So um, I've been fortunate enough uh, that of all the schools across Central Ohio that, that uh, uh, these thousand children come from, uh, my kids' school was always one of those, those schools. So I have four children. All four of my kids participated in Momentum. And I'm also... Um, <laughs> Fortunate enough that uh, I am blessed with a wife who, uh, while my kids uh, all s succeeded uh, greatly in school, uh, they succeeded in school because of my wife, um, and they'd succeeded in the classroom. Um, but they all, if, if you asked all of them today uh, about momentum, they would all rave about their experience in momentum. Uh, they're all older now. The, the youngest is a sophomore in high school. Um, but they all would still rave about and talk about their experience in Momentum. Um, and they, they, each of them had a blast, uh, my boys especially. I think my boys probably uh, would talk about it because I don't think my boys were necessarily um, destined for the stage and when they were in the fourth grade. Um, but they had such a great experience um, that it it became something that they wanted to do uh, as they moved on through junior high. And, and um, you know, my, my son actually uh, ended up, you know, in percussion and ended up in the marching band. And I think part of it was due to his experience in momentum. Um, but uh, the lessons that they learned, um, not just from not just from the experience of, in the and the lessons that were taught in momentum, but also the experience of being on stage and performing and um, being a part of that, um, both in in the gym and, and during their daily or their weekly routine, mm -hmm. but then also going to the Davidson Theater mm -hmm. and being a part of the larger experience and performing in front of the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, it's just such a great uh, experience. Um, and then as a parent, getting to go down and, and um, <clears throat> experience that and watch your kid, uh, your kids um, be so excited about, you know, being a part of all of that. So it's, it's, it's everything from, you know, the weekly routine of being a part of that performance and being a part of that practice mm -hmm. and being a part of the lessons that they're learning, but also then all the way up to the big performance of being downtown in mm -hmm. front of a large crowd in a big theater. Uh, it's, a, it's a big deal to these kids. It's a really big deal to these kids. And um, I'm glad that we're a part of it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If I could really quick, commissioners, because I've, I've actually gone to their classes. Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact of all the kids that are in the gyms, no matter what the social economic status is, the confidence that is instilled in these young, these children, from the shyest child to the most extroverted child, the confidence in the in just the pride that they have <clears throat> is unmatched. Mm -hmm. So if you know, I don't know if you've ever invited the commissioners to some of the actual classes. That would be fun to get commissioner. Commissioner Boy seems like he choreographed the whole thing based <laughs> on what he just said that story. Yeah. But yeah. that would be yeah. awesome to have us to have us come out and see. I'll follow up. Well, if there are no additional comments or questions, move for approval of Resolution 788-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 788-23 has been adopted.
Thank, Thank you, you very much, commissioners. Thank you. All right, on to uh, justice policy and programs. Resolution number 789-23. Resolution authorizing a professional service contract agreement with Sherry Ruckman for community health worker services for residents served via Safer Station in the amount of $37,000. Good morning, commissioners. Caitlin Looney, Deputy Director of Justice Services with the Office of Justice Policy and Program. This resolution is requesting authorization for the county administrator to execute a contract agreement with Sherry Ruckman to provide community health worker services for our Safer Station program. The contract is for a period of one year and with an amount not to exceed $37,000. It is supported by our comprehensive opioid stimulant and substance use program dollars, which were awarded to our office through the State Office of Criminal Justice Services. Ms. Ruckman is a certified community health worker through the Ohio Board of Nursing and completed part of her internship while earning her certification at Safer Station. She will be the second community health worker added to our multidisciplinary team, which, which is responsible for 72 treatment connections, distributing over 1,700 naloxone kits and 6,000 fentanyl test strips over the last year to aid in addressing the addiction crisis in our community. Ms. Ruckman will provide residents with harm reduction education, referral for substance use treatment, assist in developing recovery support plans, and most importantly, help them navigate a variety of systems to improve their holistic health. <coughs> this resolution supports goal number two of the Rise Together Blueprint for Reducing Poverty in Franklin County. And pending any questions, I request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval, resolution 789-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 789-23 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. All right, thank you. Um, and to public facilities management. Resolution number 790-23. Resolution authorizing general fund appro appropriation adjustments to support various operational needs. Good morning, commissioners. Darla Reardon, director. Public facilities management is responsible for the facility needs of the various agencies and offices of Franklin County. This resolution authorizes general fund appropriation adjustments, including a supplemental appropriation to support various facility operational needs through year end, such as utilities, building maintenance expenses, and potential snow removal. We appreciate OMB's guidance and assistance with this request. Pending any questions, this agency requests your approval of this resolution. Thank you. There are no comments or questions. Move for approval of resolution 790-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 790-23 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, Darla. Uh, purchasing department. Resolution number 791-23, resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $3,263,426.31. Good morning, commissioners. Megan Perry Ballonier, Director of Purchasing, and joining me is Tamika Bumper, Economic Equity Administrator for the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. This resolution requests your approval of 145 purchase orders for which the county auditor has pre-certified available funding. Tamika has prepared the supplier diversity data to share with you today. Good morning, Tamika. Good morning. 10 of the purchase orders being presented today are being awarded to small emerging businesses, totaling $363,050.77. Two percent is being awarded to minority-owned businesses and three percent to small businesses <clears throat> and another two percent to women-owned businesses. Once these are approved, seven agencies have provided equitable and inclusive opportunities to small businesses this week. Those agencies include Common Pleas Court, the Data Center, Domestic Relations and Juvenile Court, Emergency Management, Engineer's Office, Recorders, and the Sheriff's Office. Back to you, Megan. Thank, thank you, Tamika. Commissioners, I believe the county administrator has an amendment for the board to consider. I'll yield, yield the floor to Administrator Wilson at this time. Thank you, Director. Kenneth Wilson, county administrator. Good morning again, commissioners. Uh, I would request uh, that the board amend resolution 79-23 
to separate out the purchase order uh, in the amount of $4,000 pertaining to um, appraisal services uh, by the Weiler Company uh, for the uh, Sanitary Engineers Department for the Timber Lake uh, pump station. Again, uh, I would like to um, request that we amend for the record 791-23 uh, and separate out uh, a separate resolution 792-23 for these services under the same terms and conditions as set forth by resolution 791-23. Um, move to amend resolution 791-20, well, if there are no comments or questions, move to amend resolution 791-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 791-23 has been amended. Um, if, so if there are no comments or questions with that, then move for approval of resolution, of, Move for approval of amended resolution 791 23. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Did I need me to say it again? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moved and seconded Sorry. voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Amended resolution number 791 23 has been adopted. And commissioners, is there a motion to move to approve resolution 792 23? We had it. Sure. <coughs> That's right. Uh, we had okay. Move for approval of resolution 792-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Abstain. Resolution number 792-23 has been adopted with Commissioner Boyce's noted abstention. Thank you, commissioners. I realize you couldn't. Yeah. All right, so that concludes our agenda. Are there any... Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's none of those. <laughs> no, there are not. Um, and uh, are there, is there any media, uh, either in person or online, that would like to uh, talk to, the, speak to the commissioners or anybody else? Journalizations is the word I was looking for. <laughs> All right, seeing none, that concludes our agenda for today. Uh, we will see everybody next week. <laughs> Not sure why I couldn't think of the word. That's okay.